Cuphead, a game stylized after rubber hose cartoons from the 1930s, was pretty popular back in 2017 when it first came out. And now, in 2022, it's having a bit of a resurgence. With the Cuphead show being released on Netflix, and the delicious Last Course DLC supposedly coming out this year, we finally decided to talk about it. In a game about stronger and stronger bosses, it only makes sense to ask who's the strongest in all of Cuphead. I'm Kyle with 1UP Binge, and this is Cuphead Weak to Powerful. We'll be starting with the weakest character in Cuphead, and work our way up until we find the most powerful character. Starting out, the weakest character is Elder Kettle. Now, we're not knocking Elder Kettle, not really, but he serves mostly as a moral leader for Cuphead and Mugman, and not particularly a pillar of strength. As his name implies, he is on the older side, and this stops him from ranking any higher. However, we can't really knock him because he does give Cuphead and Mugman the potion that allows them to use the magical abilities that they use to beat the devil. However, he still is old, looks frail, and quite slow if the intro to Isle 2 is anything to go by. Ranking slightly above him as second weakest character is the Legendary Chalice. The Legendary Chalice is a spirit that is trapped throughout the mausoleums spread throughout Inkwall Isle. She seems to be a ghost of some kind and is quite easily trapped in an urn. However, much like Elder Kettle, she is responsible for upgrades that Cuphead and Mugman can obtain. She actually gives them the super moves that have a variety of uses, and these more powerful abilities means she is slightly stronger than Elder Kettle. Rounding out the weakest group of characters is Porkrind. Porkrind runs the aptly named Porkrind's Emporium, where he sells charms and weapons to the boys ranging from extra health to spread shots to smoke bombs. Porkrind is also the only non-boss character who looks like he could pack a wallop. He's relatively big and seems to have a good bit of muscle, so even though we don't see the extent of his abilities, he definitely looks like he could pack a fight. Combine his stature with his wide variety of weapons, and it's no surprise that he ranks here, even if he's still weak compared to everyone else. Up next on our list is the Root Pack, a group of four root vegetables. They're made up of Sal Sputter, a potato, Ali Bulb, an onion, Horace Radish, a radish, and Chauncey Chantenay, a carrot. Being massive vegetables, they have a variety of abilities at their disposal, although none of them are particularly threatening. Sal is able to shoot clumps of dirt and worms from his mouth that honestly don't fly that fast and are quite easy to dodge. Ali cries massive tears, although they fall quite slowly. Horace spins around like a tornado, and is about the same size as Cuphead and Mugman. Chauncey is arguably the most powerful of the group, as he's able to send carrot missiles after Cuphead and Mugman, as well as shoot psychic beams from his third eye. By themselves, the Root Pack's members aren't really that much of a threat, but together they are quite strong. Next up is Sally Stage Play. Sally is fought quite late in the game, and is a famed actress apparently, as her entire fight takes place on a stage. This is why she ranks so low compared to when you faced her in the game. All of her massive powerful attacks are all props or done via help from others like babies or nuns, or her groom. She does have some sort of teleporting power which is quite interesting and seems to be quite acrobatic as she can jump high in the air and kick downwards. However, Sally's entire repertoire is derived from acting and not actual ability, which is why she has to rank here. Similarly, Captain Brinnybeard is next up on our list. Brinnybeard, much like Sally before him, is mostly just a human and not much else. Sure, he looks like he could pack a punch, and he does captain a living ship, but his skills seem to be just having said ship and some sea creatures as friends. He's a big guy who can control animals to some degree, and has a laser spewing ship. However, the ship only spews lasers after Brinnybeard is out of the picture. Therefore, we can't in good conscience raise him higher than this. Up next on our list is the final boss of Inkwell Isle 1, Cagney Carnation. Cagney is a giant flower who has the ability to shift his face and arms forward long distances as well as fire a variety of seeds in a variety of ways. He can shift his face into a gatling gun, summon dandelion bursts, and very sharp vines that can impale the boys. However, despite his wide array of abilities, he seems to be stuck in place. Our avian adversary Wally Warbles is up next. Wally is a big bird in a birdhouse, and beyond that, there isn't a whole lot to say. He has the ability to summon small attack birds, shoot eggs from his mouth, and shift his body in a variety of ways. 
specifically shooting feathers from his body, or turning his head into a trash can, or hand that fires bullets. Now, we don't see the full extent of his abilities, but the ones we do see don't really impress or prove he's very strong. He can shift his body or use his son to his advantage, but even those abilities are very weak in comparison to some. But he does have the advantage over Cagney of being able to move. Queen of the Sugarland Shimmy, Baroness Von Bonbon is up next. Bonbon seems to be a queen of some kind as she controls five unique and random subjects she uses against the boys. The subjects can do things like split into nine pieces or jump at extreme speeds and heights. But she also controls a magic castle that can grow limbs and chase the boys. She can throw her own head without dying, has impeccable aim with her candy cane shotgun, and has intense leadership skills. However, these powers aren't mystical or physically impressive, so she is still quite outclassed. A bit of a surprise, but King Dice and his minions are up next. We're ranking King Dice with his minions because his minions are the majority of his boss fight. King Dice by himself isn't much to talk about. He's strong enough to lift both Cuphead and Mugman at the same time and throw them through a door. But besides that, his strongest ability is that his hands and cards seem to have minds of their own. Sure, he has the Devil's Ear, but that's not enough to bring him higher. His minions, however, do place him higher on our list because each of them has a variety of abilities ranging from spilling their own bodily liquids without dying to performing magic or rearranging their body at will. The next character on our list is the big slime known as Goopy Legrande. Goopy starts off as a relatively large ball of slime that bounces around before swallowing a pill that causes him to grow to massive size. In this massive size, he's shown to be very strong as his punches have massive reach and can be quite hard to dodge. The problem is he is a bit slow and his punches have a lot of windups, which means they can be quite easy to dodge. He does die during the fight, being crushed by his own grave, and he seems to have some sort of ghostly possession powers as he possesses his grave to attack Cuphead and Mugman. His wide array of abilities makes it quite easy to place him here on our list. Twin Fighters, Ribby and Croaks are up next. Ribby and Croaks are a pair of frog brawlers who you fight on a riverboat. They wear outfits referencing Street Fighter and seem to be trained fighters themselves. Not only do they wear boxing gloves, but they wear belts reminiscent of martial arts belts, one red and one brown, both of which are high-ranking belts in many systems. They're able to shoot literal fireflies from their stomachs, shoot energy blasts that look like fists, spin fast enough to cause massive wind, and can combine together to become a giant slot machine. As slot machines, they are invincible in most cases and can fire a variety of attacks such as coins or rolling barrels. Ribby and Croaks seem to be some of the stronger physical foes for the boys, but they also have a lot of tricks up their sleeves. Moving on to the threatening Zeppelin, Hildeberg. Hilda is a literal blimp of a lady who rides a unicycle for some reason, but don't let her look fool you. She is a threat. In her base state, she's able to use her words to actually harm the boys by shooting literal letters at them or summoning small blimps to shoot at them. She's able to transform into cloud creatures that can shoot lasers, arrows, or physically strike an opponent and in her final form summons UFOs. In her aforementioned final form, she's also huge and takes up a large portion of the sky. She can't rank any higher because she's not physically strong, although her wide array of powers is quite interesting to try to deal with. Up next we have a literal rat, that being Werner Wormann. It's unknown if Cuphead and Mugman shrink down to face this boss or if he is quite huge, so we can't really consider that in the ranking. What we can consider, however, is that Werner seems to be amazingly smart, and it's implied he not only built his soup can tank, but also cats and wagon the giant cat in the background. He is a skilled pilot for both the tank and the aforementioned cat, and seems to have some sort of mystical powers as he can summon the ghosts of dead rats to attack the Cup Brothers. Werner relies mostly on a variety of traps and tools, and is not particularly physically strong unless he is controlling Katzenwagen, but his genius allows him to very barely outrank Hildeberg. Now we come to the dragon, Grim Matchstick. Grim Matchstick is a dragon who towers high in the sky and is much bigger than our protagonists. He has a variety of attacks that make him quite the nuisance. He can shoot ripples from his eyes, similar to Chauncey earlier, can shoot massive fireballs in a variety of patterns, summons small flame minions that have their own minds, 
and can even turn into a King Ghidorah-like Hydra with three heads. One of these heads can turn into a literal flamethrower. He has intense control of his own tail and can skewer with it, and seems to have massive claws that he rarely uses. Grim is shy and nervous and sees himself as misunderstood, which is why we haven't seen the full extent of his power. Therefore, we can't rank him any higher, although theoretically he may be much stronger. The next character on our list is Beppy the Clown. Beppy, as his name implies, is a clown at a carnival slash amusement park who has control over most of the crazy rides. He can summon the roller coaster, seemingly at will, can shoot magical horseshoes from his carousel, and has some sort of control over the little green penguins. He can summon living balloon animals that he can send after Cuphead and Mugman, and by the end of the battle, becomes part of the park itself with a giant ride that he can use to deal damage. Beppy has a wide variety of abilities that make him quite the threat. While he's not mystical, Dr. Kale and his robot rank high because of a different kind of strength. The doctor by himself is a literal genius who has a variety of tech at his disposal, including the titular robot and a mystical power gem. The robot has a variety of tools as well, including a mouth cannon, small fighter plane minions, retractable and extendable arms, a giant magnet to pull people in, as well as a rocket head that can fly around at will. He's also invulnerable and requires the boys to take out certain parts rather than just hit him with all they've got. His wide array of tools and abilities make it hard to pin down how to destroy him, but he seems to be quite slow, which makes it easy to finish him off. Next up is actually a group of characters being Phantom Express. Phantom Express consists of four parts. Blind Spectre mostly just shoots eyeball projectiles, but is a ghost and has the powers associated with it. It seems like the Spectre can possess items and go intangible at will. The Conductor is a giant skeleton who is amazingly strong and able to crush people under his grip. The Lollipop Ghouls spew electrical energy from their mouths that are probably very dangerous. Finally, the head of the train can move incredibly fast, galloping like a horse at the same speed as a steam locomotive and he can fire a spinning bone wheel at opponents to hurt them. Although the Phantom Express is exceedingly powerful, and it makes sense you face them so late in the game. A Gorgon Mermaid, Calamaria, is up next. She's quite strong because of the variety of powers at her disposal. Firstly, she can only be damaged by being shot in the head, which makes her quite hard to kill if the boys are unaware. Secondly, she has some control over sea life, as she can summon pufferfish, multiple other kinds of fish, seahorses, and swordfish that can attack the boys. Thirdly, she has some sort of mystical power because she can belch ghost pirates that corner our protagonists. However, after getting shocked by electrical eels, she gains a new subset of powers and her hair comes to life. Firstly, she can now turn the boys to stone, which is a massively powerful spell that is hard to deal with. She can fire bullets that split apart randomly, and in her final phase, she has a much more powerful ray of stone. However, one of the most annoying bosses, Rumor Honeybottoms, is up next. Rumor has a wide variety of things at her disposal. She is the queen of a beehive and therefore has both worker and security bees at her disposal, who are willing to die for her. However, her main source of power comes from her magic wand, where she can summon a variety of items, including a magic tetrahedon that spews lasers, or a striped pink sphere that follows the target. However, her most powerful spell turns her into a fighter plane that can fire her fists like a projectile or turn them into buzzsaws to shred through an opponent. She can also drop her head like a wrecking ball or fire small bee missiles that track down her targets. Her powers are vast and her level is very hard. Taking the bronze medal of power is the Jimmy the Great. Although he is fought quite early in the journey, he is the most powerful standard boss in our eyes. He is a genie and quite the muscular one at that. He looks like he could probably beat someone up without any magic. It's also implied that he's not using his full power as he seems to treat the fight as a game. He can summon a multitude of creatures, such as the cupet that fires bullets similar to the boys, spinning pyramids that shoot in all directions, swords that home in like missiles, or zombie-like mummies. He can shift his form into a variety of other forms, such as pillars that have only one weak spot, or a puppet master for the aforementioned cupet. This guy has a lot going for him as far as power, but he's still outclassed by our top two. 
Snatching the silver medal of power is the devil. The devil is a being of seemingly infinite power with a variety of dark magic and minions at his disposal. Even without digging into his boss fight, it's obvious he ranks here as he is not only confirmed to be stronger than the rest, but all of them owe their soul to him. He's influential and quite persuasive as the bad ending shows, and he owns a giant casino with hundreds of players. He can stretch and contour his body at will, become massive beyond anything the boys have faced, and cast a variety of spells to harm them, from floating orbs to skeletal minions. The devil is by far the strongest enemy in the game, but it's quite obvious the gold medal of power goes to Cuphead and Mugman. Due to being the playable character, they canonically defeat every previous character on the list, save for the very first three. Not only do they canonically defeat the devil, and are therefore stronger than him, but they have a wide variety of things at their disposal to do so, from smoke bombs to become invisible for a short time, explosive shots, charge shots, or boomerang shots alongside others. It's hard not to believe they're the strongest characters, so they definitely deserve the gold. But let us know in the comment section if you agree with our ranking, and make sure to go watch the Good to Evil video we did for the Cuphead show on Netflix over on Wicked Binge. We just released it because we thought the show was really cool. And of course, if you need a 1-up, hit that notification bell and binge our other videos. Thanks for watching.